Hello everybody, this is Alex at Rundeck.com and I'm going to show you an exciting new feature that we have in Rundeck Pro 2.0 that gives you more control over your workflow. So I have a job here. I'm going to click on this definitions tab to show you what it does. You can see it has four steps. Uh, it runs a, a number of jobs as dependencies and if this job fails it has a, an error handler. But this isn't telling the whole story about what I really needed to do. I want it to run the first task, and only after it's completed successfully. I want to run the second and third task, but I want to do those in parallel. And when they both complete, I want to move on to task four. So what I'm really describing here is a case where I want to fork into two parallel tasks, and then let those tasks uh, join at completion to run task four. Now this isn't something that uh, is easy to implement in our non-pro uh, run deck, but in the new pro we have a, a new plugin we call a workflow strategy. In fact, in the new version of run deck, there's a new workflow engine that lets us, uh, through plugins, create these strategies. So I'm gonna click this tab here and show you um, what we call a rule set. Now, for the experienced run deck users, you'll notice that we have a diagram now. And this diagram is showing you really that story I was just telling you, where at the beginning of the job, we run the first step called archive, and then we run these two in parallel, and then finally, we run the fourth step. And that's all defined here in this, this rule syntax. It's a very simple uh, syntax that you name the step, and then we have what we call a rule directive. So this one's saying run that step, named archive at start. Then we run these two delete expired and optimize steps after the archive step is completed. And then we run vacuum data after those two have completed. So it's pretty simple, but uh, powerful at the same time. Now I'm in the definition of the job. And when I'm writing a job, this diagram is very helpful to me. It kind of lets me check my, my thinking and making sure that the model of my workflow is what I expect. But it's also very handy when I run the job. So I'm going to click this tab and run it. And of course, to run, to monitor the job, we come to this tab and here's the old view, which can still be useful. It collates all the output and tells you what step is running. But I really want to look at it in the logical way. So I'm going to click this here, the workflow view. And now you can see that it, we're on this step and there is coloring here. So when it's running, it's this purple flashing. We know we're on this step. As the job proceeds, we'll move down to these two steps. And these shapes are animated and colored along the way. So we know where we are. So this is a more user-friendly interface, especially if you aren't the person who wrote the job, or maybe there's just a lot of output. For example, I could come here. There's not really much output in this example, but oftentimes there is. This is, uh, you know, a simpler uh, way to view, it, especially when it's a more complex example even than this.